Perfect. So uh, just understand, guys, as well, that I am going to be opening at the end for questions. So write, write your questions down or put them in the, in the chat box. I'm, I'm going to be answering every single question you guys uh, have when it comes to rentals or the real estate market or anything in, uh, um, in, in general. So um, we'll, leave it, we'll leave that to the end, okay? Okay, so let's just start. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Okay, I just wanna make sure, can everybody see this right here? Can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay, great, perfect. So um, so let's say you guys got a client to the Facebook Marketplace or referral, wherever you guys got the client from, and you guys are ready to submit an offer. So let's uh, start by saying that for a rental, right now you're gonna need a rental application. You guys can write this down. So you're gonna need a rental application. You're gonna need a copy of their police report as well as their credit report. Uh, you will also need the contract to lease, which we're gonna go over right now. And um, what else do you need? Application, credit, background check, um, contract to lease. Um, guy, you're doing more rentals. Can you tell me if I'm missing anything there? That's pretty much yeah, it, Yeah, right? so, yeah, you, you've had the rental application. I can't hear you, but Give me one second. Can you hear me now? Driver's license. Nope, can't hear you. Let me take my headset off. It might be the headphones, actually. How about now? Is that better? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I can hear you now. It was actually me. I had you muted. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I know. It's um, credit report, police report, um, proof of income. So like last three pay stubs, last three bank statements. There you go. Perfect. So that's the, I knew I was missing something. So um, yeah, so proof of income, if they're self-employed, they're going to request bank statements. If they are, if they work for a company, they'll be requesting pay stubs. Am I right? Correct. Perfect. So once you have all that information, remember guys, you need to send this with the contract to lease. Okay, I like sending it all together, get it out of the way. If you find yourself in a situation that for some reason your client hasn't gathered all this information yet, you can definitely send the contract to lease first, but let the agent know, listen, I'm gonna be sending you the documentation later on. Um, there's, is, there's a website, which I'm gonna type it down here in the chat. Um, it's called rentsfree.com. Okay, so I use this website personally. It is freaking awesome. So once you find that property that your client wants to rent, um, you send them a link through this website and it, it generates the rental application, um, credit report to TransUnion, uh, eviction history, as well as the background check. Okay, the only thing they need to send you is the proof of income as, and, and a copy of the license aside from submitting that application, okay? So let me just put some people in, perfect. Okay, so now let's get right into it, guys. So how about, we're gonna fill out the contract to lease through transaction desk live. I'm gonna do it right with you guys so you guys can get the practice and see exactly how I do it, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is, um, once you're in transaction desk, this is the, the main dashboard, you can either open a transaction by clicking this blue house here, the one that says create transaction, let me close this here, create transaction, or you can go to the house here. If you open this up, you can see that this is transaction. So this is how you create a transaction. You wanna create a brand new, okay? So let's go this way. All right, perfect. So once you're here, you wanna open a brand new transaction and you're gonna click here, add, okay? And then you get this window. So I typically, for transaction name, let's say, I typically write this. Sorry, so I have people going, joining in, it's interrupting my typing. Uh -huh. 
Okay. So I typically put transaction for, and I put my client's name and uh, for the purpose of the training, we'll leave it as test. Let me, second, there you go. Okay. Let me do something guys. Um, okay, perfect. Okay, so then from here, you wanna, click, uh, you wanna pick the template that relates to the transaction. So if you're doing a, a lease, you wanna uh, pick um, close lease rental ready for pay. Now, let me explain to you guys what this is. So this is going to create a checklist for you that uh, it's gonna give you a list of documents for the end, not for the beginning, for the end, for you to get paid. So it, it, if you, you have to pick it. So you have to put a name and you have to pick the template uh, when you open a transaction, okay? So if you know that it's gonna be, uh, uh, let's say you're trying to get your listing uh, uh, approved, then you're gonna pick sales listing. Or let's say you're representing the buyer, you can put close sale ready for pay. Let's say you're using new world title and you're going to do a CDA, which is, you know, commission disbursement authorization for you to get paid at closing. Then you do close sale CDA only. Okay. So you got to pick the template that pertains to the transaction. For this case, it's going to be a close lease rental ready for pay. Okay. And then you can actually pick or you can copy and paste the MLS number to populate all the information from the MLS. So let's do that right now. So I have an MLS number here. So let's paste it and there you go. Now it's asking me how am I gonna add myself in the transaction? In this case, I'm going to be the selling agent because I'm not a listing agent. Uh, I don't have the listing, I'm representing the tenant, so I'm the selling agent in this case. So let's click that and then we wanna click create. Okay. All right. So since we plugged in the MLS, um, you're gonna have all the information that the system took from the MLS. So all of this stuff, the MLS, uh, the system took from the MLS itself. Okay. So I'm just gonna change a couple of things. So for example, here. I'm gonna put as a condo, as you guys can see in the picture. Okay, in this picture, the system took it itself as well. I didn't do that, all right? So all that information is there. List price, let's say our, off, um, our purchase price. Remember that the system is gonna be mainly for purchases. That's how it's designed. But when it says, let's say, uh, let's say purchase price is rental price, okay? So we're gonna just offer full price. 1750, okay? And if you guys notice something, this one is blue and all the other ones are in black. There's a reason for that. And I'm going to explain it once we get there, okay? So let's see. We don't need anything else because nothing else applies. I mean, you can put a, uh, the deposit number here, which is typically the first month, um, but everything else, if you read, it doesn't apply to our transaction. Okay, beautiful. So let's click next. As you guys can see, there's steps. So we're on step two or five. So we have here um, the list date. And remember, take a, take a, always take a look at the blue ones because those are important. So let's pick the offer date, let's pick today. And the closing day, let's say, I don't know, they're gonna, they wanna move in the 1st of September. So let's pick the 1st of September, okay? then everything else doesn't apply because you know there's no application date really, there's no commitment date, that, that, that's more for purchases. So let's click next. Okay, so right here we, we add the people involved in the transaction. So we already have me as a selling agent and we have the listing agent already in here. He took it from the MLS. So now we wanna add our tenants and our landlords, right? So that's what we're gonna do now. So let's, you can either create a new, a new transaction contact, add an existing contact, you can add yourself again, or you can add from Google contacts, okay? Since you guys are pretty much new and starting this, this system new, 
you always most likely are going to use create a new transaction contract. So let's click there. Then this, uh, this window pops out and we're going to pick tenant. Then let's say, uh, let's put random name. Okay. And if you have their email, if you have their email, you can put their email, but it's not necessary. Um, let's say you remember guys from this system, you can also send electronically. So the contract to lease that we can, that we are going to get uh, filled out right now together, you can also send it from here to your client to get a sign. Okay. So let's just put a random, a random email here. Okay. Then we click save. Now let's add the landlord. Okay. Um, all of you should know exactly where to find the landlord's information. If you do not know, I'm gonna show it to you right now. So there are several ways. Let me bring this window here. And this is the listing that we are using as an example. So let's say you wanna find the owner's, the owner's information. You can either click the little eye icon in the listing that's gonna direct you to IMAP, okay? Awesome. So here we're going to have that the current owner is a company, which is okay. So all we got to do is just copy and paste this information and put it into transaction desk. But before we get there, well, in this case, it's actually Miramar. So they're using Broward County. So for Broward County, I typically just use IMAP. But um, if you're going to go, let's say, if you have a property in Miami Day, you can. Um, go to miamiday.gov, which is this website right here. Okay, so miamiday.gov, there's gonna be an option there that you can uh, do a property search and you can search any property here. You can find uh, tax information, you can find the owner's name, you can find everything. So actually, let me put my address real quick so you guys can see how I come out. <clears throat> so in here, as you can see, you can have you have the address, you have the owner's information, you have the address of the property, and you have so much inf um, other information about the property, like the sales, the sales price, and the purchase price, and all the good stuff. So this is a good website to find out information about the home. Okay, so let's go here. Let's close this up. Now let's go back to transaction desk, and let's add the owner. So we, we click here, create new transaction. We're gonna click landlord and we're gonna paste the name, okay? If it's an LLC like this one, I typically put the first name as, as the first name and then LLC as the last name, okay? And then we click save because we don't have the email. We don't have any more information about that landlord, okay? And then we click next. So now we're in the, in the tab that says form. So in here, we're gonna uh, bring out the contract to lease, okay? So let's type it. So let me actually go back and show you how I did that. Okay, so from here, you're gonna click add, right? And then this window pops out. And from here, all you're gonna do is type. So whatever form you need. So if you need, let's say the as is contract, you're gonna have it here, okay? Let's say, let's see, let's say you need an addendum. You can start typing the word addendum and all the addendums are gonna come out. But we need in this case, the contract to lease. So let's go there. There you go. So we're gonna click the little circle and we're gonna add it. That's all you're gonna do for now because we're gonna get in it later, okay? Then we click next. It's gonna go to documents. Right now we don't need to input any document, but in the case that you have any other documents, let's say you have the ID or you have the police report and anything already saved in your computer and you want to delete it from your computer and put it into the transaction, you can add any documents here by just clicking the plus button or the add, or the add button and just drag it to, to this blue box here. Okay? So let's click close and done. So right now we have our transaction created. Okay? We're gonna to go to fill out the contract to lease, but I wanna I want you guys to understand the dynamic of this here. Okay, you have these little boxes. So I have notes, 
authentic uh, sign, which is when I send something for signing, I can follow up when he's signing this box. And then I have all the boxes. How do you add and how do you edit these boxes? By clicking this lock here. So when you click this lock, you can move these boxes however you want, and you can add boxes actually. So let's see, let's say I wanna put contacts. Well, I can only have a maximum of six, but let's say you can delete this box and you can you know, add another box as, as you like. All of this is customizable, okay? There you go, and, then, and now you have contacts, all the contacts that are related to this transaction, okay? Super simple. And then to just save it, you lock it back up. So you click the little lock, okay? To navigate the transaction, you wanna use the right side of the window. So this is how you go to details, so this is how you find out the information about the property. Let's go one by one quickly. Then um, we can go to contacts. So you can look at the contacts that you added. You can take them out. You can edit them however you want. Uh, forms, where we download all the forms and we fill them out and send them from signing. Signings, once you send something for signing, it's going to be right here for you to track it. Documents, all the documents for transaction and checklist. This is what I was talking about in the beginning, guys. So when you pick that template, remember that you had, you know, the transaction name and the template, this is what you picked, okay? So since we picked a close residential uh, lease, you can actually, it'll tell you here the list of, prop, of, of documents that you will need eventually uh, to get paid, okay? So it's a good way to track. So if you're almost getting to the final walkthrough date, you know, make sure you have the contract to lease there, the lease agreement, the escrow letter, property information, a copy of the MLS, commission request form, and commission um, receipt or wire once you get paid, okay? So this is this is your checklist to get paid, which, you know, this is another training for another time, okay? Then we have tasks. You can add your um, tasks for yourself. So let's say, you know, like follow up on lease agreement, something like that, and you can set up a date to remind you. So you can say, let's say for tomorrow or something like that. And boom, you can create a task, a like reminder, okay? That's what task is for. And uh, then the rest of the stuff is not really uh, that important. But remember guys, the best way to learn this system is by playing with it, okay? I find it very functional to handle my transactions. Now, as a, as a CRM may not be that good. Okay, because there's no way to, to do the same thing that you're doing for transactions for uh, separate clients. Okay, so I have a separate system that I use to follow up with my leads, which if you guys want to know, I use Lion Desk, which is this one right here. Okay, so this is how I follow up with my clients and it's, I love it. I, I really enjoy using Lion Desk. There's other people that use Follow a Boss or Top Producer or systems like that. It all depends on how you like uh, or how much you like the system. So my, my recommendation is play around with a couple. Uh, most of them have like a week free trial. So try as many as you can and decide which one you want to use. Let's go back. So let's go to forms. Okay. And now we're going to fill out the contract to lease together. Should be very quick. And then we're going to open the form, um, the training for, for, for questions. Okay. So let's go in it. So if you guys use DocuSign or um, for simplicity, you guys are gonna be familiar with what we're doing right now because it is the exact same way. You can edit the, the, the contract or the form in any way that you want, just like DocuSign or for simplicity, you can do it live, okay? So here, we have the owner and the seller, which we already input that before. Then we have the address, which we already put that before. It took it from the MLS. And that's all that populated automatically. Now, remember guys, I told you about the blue letters. Um, so when, when you, the, the blue letters, what that means is that it'll populate in the contract. It'll populate in any form that you add in the transaction. The blue part, the, the blue letters. Um, everything else doesn't, but you can always edit however you want. Okay. 
So we have uh, seller and, and, and um, no seller buyer, landlord and tenant. And here, guys, if there's two of them, let's say you, you sometimes are going to have another, let's just put this one, another person here and you want to separate it like with an N, you can do it here. Okay. Now, uh, here, this date is uh, how many days are you going to give the landlord to give you either a counter offer or a denial or an acceptance. So I typically give the landlord maybe a day or two. So let's say we send the offer today. I'll give them maybe on to Thursday to give me a, a response. It doesn't really matter. They can take as long as they want, especially in this market that is so competitive. So I put that date there. And then here, um, you, you're picking who's going to give you an answer. So obviously, we're the ones sending the offer. We want the landlord to give us an answer. So we're going to click landlord. Okay. Number two. We're gonna pick that the um uh, 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 this is where we're gonna pick the deposit, okay, guys. The deposit is not the security deposit. Don't get that mixed up. The deposit comes from the first month rent, okay. So what you're putting in escrow is the first month's rent. That's where your commission comes from, okay. So. Think about it like this. Your job as a realtor is to find a tenant for your, uh, to find a tenant, to find a house for your client, which is a tenant, right? Once you do that, you're done. That's it. If the tenant changes his mind, it's up to you whether you want to return that money or not, but you don't have, really have to, okay? So if, if, if you already did your job, if the tenant is already approved by the HOA, and the night before he had a dream that he doesn't want the house anymore, that's, you, you're still entitled to get paid. You're still entitled to, uh, uh, to compensation because you already executed your job. Now, if you have a good relationship with that client, you may want to talk to the listing agent and let them know what's going on and try to negotiate that money back to your client just you know, to, to do a good deed. But you don't really have to, okay? So let's say that I, I believe this listing was for $17.50, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, $17.50. So the first month rent is going to be $17.50. That's what we're going to put there. And we're going to put it what is called into an escrow account. The one we use is Snowball Tire. Okay. So what this means is that upon the acceptance of this contract to lease, your client is going to make a check. It, it, can, it has to be a cashier's check or, a, or, or not a personal check. It has to be a cashier's check or a money order or a wire transfer to the title company to have a, as, as a deposit to show that, that that client, that tenant is interested in the property and they have some skin in the game. Okay? So... That's what you that that, that part is is um is what you're gonna put here. I know you guys are gonna have questions about this part, so write them down or put them in the in the chat box, and I'll ask them at the end. Number uh, paragraph number three is the address. That's very self-explanatory, and then we're gonna put here unfurnished always, unless you know it's otherwise. So if you know that the property uh, is going to be rented furnished, then obviously click first. And here you're gonna put any other tenant that's gonna be living in the property, but that is not going to be contributing for the is not gonna be contributing for the rent. So on top here, Raul Perez is the one that's going to be paying the rent monthly. But Raul Perez has a wife and two kids. But the wife doesn't work, it's a stay-at-home mom. And then we have two kids that are going to live in the property. So all you're gonna put here is, is wife and two kids that's it you don't have to put any names you don't have to put any of that all right paragraph number four is about the lease term so we're going to uh, pick september 1st that's what we said the tenant was going to start living in the property now it ends the day before of the next year so if they are starting on september 1st 2021 you're going to end the lease on August 22, 
August 31st of, tw of, of 2022, okay? So if the lease starts on September 15, okay? It will end sept uh, September 15 of 2021. It'll end September 14 of 2022, okay? <clears throat> Paragraph five. In this box here, you are going to put how much money the tenant is going to give prior to moving date. Okay, so they're going to give first, last, and security, typically. Okay, so you're going to add, you're going to multiply 1750 times three. And that's going to equal 5250. Uh, sorry, guys, did not write it down. 5250. Okay, and that's the money he's gonna, that person is going to need before they move in, okay? Now, the first month rent, we're doing this part here now, is $17.50, which is gonna be given upon acceptance. When this contract gets accepted, this is the money you're gonna give here, okay? It's the same thing. Last month rent, $17.50. This is typically given out walkthrough. Okay. And then the security deposit is typically also given a walkthrough. So let's do a copy and paste here. Okay. This area here is asking you, you know, so in paragraph two, where would be, where would the deposit be coming from? So paragraph two is this paragraph here. You're saying that 1750 is gonna go in the world title as a deposit and that's gonna come out from the first month rent. That's all you're gonna put there, okay? Paragraph six, you're gonna fill out two things. The term of the lease. The term of the lease is going to be 1750 times 12, which is 21,000, which is how much that tenant is going to pay for the one year lease that he's going to be living in the property. And here he's going to be paying monthly on the first of every month, and he's going to be paying 1750. Okay? It's that simple. The other option is if your client is going to pay in full. So obviously, if they're going to pay in full, you're going to click in full, the date that they're going to pay in full, and you're going to click the amount, which is 21000 okay? Um, now, you're going to click here, number seven. It all depends on the listing. So if the listing uh, uh, does permit pets, great. But if your client doesn't have any pets, then click prohibited. Because if you click permitted, you're telling that listing agent that your client has a pet. So if there's any deposit or anything like that, you're going to have to deal with that later. So if your client has no pets, automatically click uh, prohi uh, prohibited no matter what the listing says. And if, uh, the, if your client does have a pet, then put it here. And you don't really have to put anything here. I, I, I typically don't. But if you know the pet is 15 pounds, then put 15 pounds or something like that. Or you can read the listing and if the listing has any restrictions, um, let's say only up to 20 pounds, then you can put just like that, only up to 20 pounds. Okay, that's simple. Smoking, always prohibited, no matter what. Okay, always. Now let's go to the second page. Nine, it's gonna talk about utilities. All you wanna put here, guys, is if there's an HOA, in this case, there's going to be an HOA because we're doing a condominium, you're gonna put HOA, that's it. If there's no HOA, you're gonna put no HOA. That's all you're gonna put there, nothing else. In this case, we are gonna leave it as HOA because there's gonna be an HOA just for the, the purpose of the training. 10, here is talking about what your client, we mean the tenant, is responsible for doing the lease, okay? So uh, typically what I put is $150, 
actually I write it like this. Repairs under 150, okay? Then I put here keys, AC filter, and smoke detector batteries. Okay, this doesn't change, guys. It's exactly the same for every contract to lease. Every client, every problem. Now, the lease agreement, remember, once you send this with all the, all the applicant's information, you're gonna get a lease agreement. And that lease agreement is gonna describe in great detail what the landlord is responsible for and what the tenant is responsible for. This contract to lease, it shouldn't actually be called a contract, in my opinion, because it's technically just an offer. It's not really the contract between landlord and tenants. Okay, this is just you sending an offer. The lease agreement, the 12th page, or I think it's 18 now, 18 page contract, that's the binding contract between the landlord and the tenant. And that's where all the rules are gonna be uh, there, cancellation fees, uh, responsibilities, where the payment, or where the tenant is gonna uh, give the payment to the landlord. That's where all the information is going to be. Okay, or where you'll find that information. Number 11 is going to be about the HOA. Very simple. You're going to click the tenant because the tenant is going to be the one applying. Then here you put the uh, HOA application fee, which typically you'll find in the listing. If we go to this listing here, I want to show you exactly where you'll find it. So this is perfect because it says pets. You see that maximum 20 pounds. We were just talking about that. So this is where you will find that. And then the application, this guy did a horrible job at doing their listing, but it says here application fee, a hundred bucks. So that's pretty much what you're gonna put there. So let's go back to transaction, a hundred bucks. And here, uh, since we don't have a date yet, I always put here up on acceptance. So what you're saying here is that open acceptance, your client is going to be paying a hundred bucks to apply for the HOA. And in number 12, you're gonna put any additional terms, any anything extra, you know, um, I don't know, anything that, oh, let, let's say the, the couch is being negotiated in the deal, then put it here. Tenants would like to have the couch or whatever, something like that. This is just for extra wording that if you wanna put, but every case is different, so I can't really point pinpoint something now. So that's, if you have anything extra that's out of this contract, that's what you would put. Okay. Everything else is left empty. And then you have signatures for your client and the liner. And that's pretty much it guys. It's very simple, very self-explanatory. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to send it to get a sign from here, which is super simple. So obviously you can um, save an exit or you can um, sign from the actual document, which is just clicking this little pen here, then you click yes, and then you're gonna land into this window here that we're gonna land right now. Okay, so here you have different options. So here you can um, pick whether you wanna send it all at once. So if there's different people, you can send it all at once, uh, the contract for them to sign it uh, at the same time, or you can send, or you can send it, um, you know, in order. So, so one one person will receive it first, and then once that person signs it, the other person will receive it, and then they'll sign. You also like for simplicity. Then here you can put an expiration date. When do you want this signature to expire? You can put reminders. So you can put uh, every four hours. Or I don't know. Every day, every four hours, remind them that they have to sign something. And then everything else I pretty much leave empty. I, I actually leave everything empty. Um, like I leave it as default. I leave it the way, the way it is here. Participants, here's where you pick who you want to send it to. In this case, we're going to send it to Raul Perez, which is our client, which is a tenant. You click add. Then the document, just make sure that that's the document you're sending. And then the sign. Here you can see where the boxes and the signatures are gonna be located at, which we're gonna take a look at that right now. So here you go, here we have the boxes. 
and the signature. And here you can actually mark it up. So you can put, um, I don't know, like any writing if you want to write afterwards, or if you want to add another initial, you can add an initial here, or you can add a signature here. And if you click this little thing here, you can either delete it or put like a date stamp and put it like, you know, when they sign it, the day will pop out. Uh, you can put a check mark. Let's say you want to put a check mark here. All of that, guys. So you can play around with this as well. Create a fake contract, send it to yourself, see how you receive it. So you can then explain it to your client. And uh, after you do this, you will just click next. And after you click next, you send it to your client and they'll sign it electronically. You receive it within the transaction. Super simple. Okay. So now I'm going to stop sharing, guys. Um, you guys can unmute yourself, whatever you guys, whatever questions you guys may have. Now it's the time to ask. Hi, Pablo. How are you? What's up, guy? How are you? I'm doing great, man. So listen, um, I'm actually dealing with uh, clients right now, and one of them is a veteran. And I noticed that on the CTL, uh, there is an option for... I believe it's number 14. Yes. Is the prospective tenant a service member as defined as in FS250? Would you say that's worthwhile to check mark off? Uh, yes, I would check that off. Okay. Yeah, I would say yes because uh, some uh, veterans do have some benefits with landlords and um, and uh, it's, it's, well, it's good to, uh, for the landlord to know that they're better. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, like, I have like, I have actually, so wait, like, for example, let me add to that. So, uh, veterans, you can't really, um, let's say, um, a veteran, you can't charge him any cancellation fee because if a tenant is living in a property right now and they get transferred to another, to another state or somewhere else, that landlord cannot charge that tenant any cancellation fee. So, okay. Yeah, so just just because it's the law. So it is good for that owner to know that they are a veteran because that might happen. You know, they might, you know, in the middle of the lease, they might say, look, I got time for somewhere else, I need to go. And they just have to allow it. All right. Um, kind of pegging back off of that, my, um, my client also has service animals. Um, as long as you show the documentation that yes, they're indeed service animals with the offer, they should they have to allow the dogs in the property, correct? Or is it still up to the discretion of the landlord? No, correct. So you're uh, the first one, the first thing you said. So service animals, as long as they're documented and as long as you prove documentation, they are considered humans. So they cannot, if, if the landlord denies the application or denies the offer and you know it's for the service animal um then you can your client can actually sue because that's discrimination huh okay, okay. so um the way that i would handle that boy is just tell them look they have a, it, no matter what the list is says the listing may say listen um no pets. no pets it doesn't matter a service animal they're supposed to be trained and they're supposed to be you know it's a service animal so if you have documentation as long as you can tell your client look you have you know, all the documentation, all the legal documentation to provide to this to, to these people. If your client says yes and provides the information, then the landlord should have no problem with that. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay. And then I guess my last question, if you don't mind, is the last one, I swear. Um, regarding number two with um, the deposit and stuff, I know that within Lifestyle, New World Title, that's kind of our go-to. That's, you know, to put the money into the escrow. Um, let's say for whatever reason, we're in a time crunch. What would be an alternative potentially? Do it all at walkthrough. Everything at walkthrough. At walkthrough? Yeah. Okay. So your client in that case is going to make three checks. One to Lifestyle International Realty, the other one to the other brokerage, and the rest of the money, which should be the security deposit in the last month, you're going to make it payable to the landlord. Typically, I always ask the listing agent to, to whom do I make that check? Because it might be a company or it might be somebody else that is not in the deed. Okay. So if, if let's say we submit an offer today and it gets accepted today and my client is going to move in 
Thursday, it makes no sense right. to put it in escrow. No sense. Exactly. So at that at that moment, what I'll do is I'll tell the listing agent, okay, look, we'll do everything on walkthrough. So we have the lease, we sign the lease agreement, we sign the contract, the contract to lease, and I walk through, we uh give all the checks. Make sense? Right. Yes. Now what was the what you said about who they should go to? You said the first check will go to who and then the final yeah, check will go remember, to who? remember there's three there's three months. First right. last security. The first month is split into two for the for the cooperating brokers. Okay, so right. if it's okay. two thousand dollars, let's say two thousand dollars, your client is gonna be in three checks. One for one thousand, payable to last time international realty, another one for one thousand, uh payable, let's say to Kelly Williams, and another one for four uh for four thousand payable to the landlord. Four thousand or one thousand? I just want to no, four four thousand, bro. Remember, there's three months. Three oh, months. Oh, okay. Last last security. So the security and the and the last month is payable to the landlord. That's why I said four thousand. Let's say that they are just using as an example that the rent is two thousand dollars a month. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Now I get it. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You got it, my bro. Anybody else, guys? Hey, Pablo. Yes, it's Janet. To add on to that, so the tenant is bringing those checks? In the the, case, no, in the case that what guy was talking about, in the case that he's in crunch time. So if you send an offer oh, to- Oh, okay, okay. Got it, got it. Uh, in no, the case in, that there is no escrow. In the case that there's no escrow. In your case, got that it. tomorrow, yeah, you want to bring some of the checks for disbursements. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, and actually, uh, Janet, I'm gonna use you as an example. Sorry to put you in the in the in the do it in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, guys, remember, um, the more money you put into an escrow account, the more money your client has to lose in the case of a default or in the case of a lawsuit. Okay, so that's why we always say only one month goes into escrow into the deposit. That's it. You want to have listing agents and you want to have landlords that are going to push for more. You absolutely will say no. It's that simple. Okay. If, 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 and the way that I always did it when I, I wasn't a manager before is typically I'll say my brokerage doesn't allow me. If they do, I have to only do one check. They only allow me to put one check in escrow. Period. That's it. It's that simple because you want to have people that are going to push. And in Janet's case, this happened, which nothing could happen. Everything turned out to be okay. But in the case that everything goes south, that listing agent or that owner, instead of fighting for one month, now they have two months to fight for. So your client is losing more money if they were to go into litigation. Okay? Anybody else? In regards to that example? Uh, go ahead. Give me a second, brother. Let me, let me give it over to somebody else. Yes? Pablo, hi. Um, I have a question. Yeah. I am actually writing a contract to lease to now, right after the meeting. And she's moving on September 1st if they, if they accept the contract, of course. Uh, do you recommend me to use the escrow account or no? I, I would not. No? Would not. Yeah, because Tuesday, uh, Wednesday is the first. So you have one week. So let's get you send the offer today. The offer gets accepted tomorrow. It, you, you know, it takes 48 hours for no one to, to take those checks out for you. It just doesn't make any sense. I, I would just so do everything I walk through. In that case, I put in where it says escrow account and put a walk through. And Correct. That part of what you put. Okay. Correct. So let, let, let me actually share it real quick. So they, so Julia, they don't know what we're talking about. So what Julia is talking about is this. So let's go back to forms. So let's say, let's use Julia's scenario. So let's say uh, they're gonna move in on the first and you guys are not gonna do an escrow. So here I will put, and I would also put a walkthrough here, just like this because you're not gonna give any money upon acceptance. Okay. And, and as well, I would not fill this up because there's nothing going into escrow. Make sense? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. 
right. Guy, what's up, brother? I forgot, but I think it has something to do with Peggy backing off of um, Yannette's question. <laughs> what's up? I generally forgot, so oh, you honestly, forgot? Going. I generally forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you smoking? I need some of that. <laughs> uh, it's just a nervous tick I have. It's a pen, literally a pen. <laughs> pen. Good. No, no problem. Hey Pablo. Hey Pablo, real quick. Did you yes. touch over section eight when people ask you about section eight? Uh absolutely not. So uh since this is recorded, actually let me do this. Let me pause recording right here. Got it. Thank you. You got it. Anybody else? Come on, guys. We can talk about everything. I mean, about the real estate. Now is the time that you guys can ask me anything that you want. Besides that question I had, we're good, man. I really appreciate your time today, Paul. Awesome. No, thank you, my brother. Hey, guys. I hope you guys learned something today, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these as well, uh, probably via Zoom, and, uh, and I'm going to be uh, going through the listing agreements, uh, the assets contract, lease agreements, so that way we can kind of go uh, through all the contracts, because I know it can become a, bit, a little bit overwhelming, and, uh, and it's hard to know at all. So with these little trainings, we'll help you guys as much as we can, okay? All right, guys. Take care. Thank Bye, you. Pablo. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.